What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Duane Lightfoot. And if you're watching this video, you made it all the way to layer seven of the OSI model. What's good? Hey, so today we're going to talk about what is a network engineer? I pause because if you Wikipedia or Google a network engineer, they're going to tell you they're the person that's pretty much responsible for the network, whether it be implement implementation, support, design, connectivity, blah, 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 all of that good stuff, which we all know. Well, those of us that are in the field, but those that of those of us that aren't in the field, what is a network engineer? I mean, the title's pretty cool. And it seems to be one of the more sexier titles in networking today as we know it. Well, in IT in general. And with all the changes going on, I think the responsibility is kind of changing as well because we're no longer just the person that bangs the CLI or, you know, works on a firewall. We're kind of becoming the person that's also, you know, on that CI CD pipeline as well when it comes to DevOps and writing programs and applications and all that interesting stuff when it comes to network programmability. So it's changing. But for those of you that are looking to become a network engineer or thinks the title's cool, wondering what it does, in this video, I wanna kinda put some clarity to all of that. The first thing I wanna say though, a network engineer could be male, could be female, could be black, could be white, could be Asian, could be Chinese, could be Japanese, could be Mexican, could be Hispanic. It could be fat, could be short, could be tall, could be skinny, could be slim. I think you get my point. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you're from. Can you do the job? Can you get it done? Period, point blank. That's all the industry cares about when it comes to being a network engineer. I talk a lot about your character, building yourself up. How do you present yourself? Having some swag, having that understanding, that empathy, that thing, you know, but in all honesty, can you get it done? You may not be the smartest person in the room because I'm not, and I don't try to be. Don't present myself as such. But what I do do my best to do is to never give up and never quit and do my best to continually be learning. So as a network engineer, if that's your goal, your number one rule should be learning above all else. Whether you take a job, whether you take a contract, whether you take a class, a course, work on a certification, you should always be learning and improving your skill set. That's what it means to be a network engineer. So before I keep going, I would love to hear your thoughts on what it is to be a network engineer in the comment section below, because I think the more people we can get to talk about this subject, the more interesting of a conversation we can have. But with no further ado, so in my opinion, for those of you that are interested in knowing what a network engineer is, I'll say this, a network engineer is a title, job title. Just like the word help desk, job title. But you have a, how can I say, an idea of what you'll be doing. If you're working on the help desk, you have an idea that you'll be working with customers, answering calls, and working on basic layer one, layer two, troubleshooting issues. Well, you also work on applications as well. So let's just say you work on basic troubleshooting issues on the help desk. But when it comes to being a network engineer, you can have a general understanding of that you'll be troubleshooting the network. Ha ha, see that's where it gets hairy because you assume as a network engineer that your job is just gonna be servers. Well, see, that's where it, your job is just gonna be routers, switches, and network connectivity. But whenever you go for a job and you look at the job description and it says network engineer, ask questions because there are people that have taken jobs and there's times that I've been on jobs to where as a network engineer, I work on a knock. A knock is a network operations center or a glorified help desk. And all you pretty much do with the network engineer title is monitor a screen. 
And on that screen, you're going to see all types of nodes. You could see a server, you could see switches, you could see um, routers, you could see firewalls, you could see computers, you could see APs. There are several million different applications and devices that you can monitor in these knocks. The main goal of working in a knock is to ensure that the site and the devices that need to be up are up. And if they're not not up, you're the person that either troubleshoots it or reports it. Troubleshoots it or reports it. Either way, you're in the pipeline of the ticket resolution. That's what you are. You're, you're the first line of defense to any outages that probably go on in the network. You work with the network engineers that are level two, level three. And then you also work with the service providers and the business owners and product owners in that environment. That's what you pretty much do in the knock as a network engineer. Not too sexy, not too fancy, a whole lot of boring, and a whole lot of Netflix. <laughs> but I digress. If you are in the knock, though, before I digress, I do want to say this. Don't waste your time. A lot of times working in the knock, they pay for certifications, and you have nothing but time to get certifications and to learn as much as you can and improve your skill set. Use that time wisely. All right, so enough of that. Another time or another description of a network engineer is you could have a network engineer title in, let's say, a small business. And in that small business, you could have to do everything. I mean, from running cables 30 feet up or crawling on the desk and fixing keyboards to supporting servers, whether it be databases, web servers, Windows servers, Linux servers whatever what may have you you could be that person that supports everything as a network engineer title making sixty thousand dollars but you're getting a lot of experience that's one of the things about being in a smaller environment you may have to do some of those grunt works that you assume a network engineer wouldn't have to do but you get experience that make you a lot more valuable a year or two three down the line. Three is pretty long, but a year or two down the line, you become a lot more valuable. Now, that's working in a small organization. Like I said, you could have to do everything along with supporting the infrastructure. And sometimes in those environments, you don't even touch network. They could have a managed service provider that has the knock, their knock team monitoring the network and all you're doing is supporting the servers and the internal network which could be the switches. So you're doing layer one, layer two, and then the servers on the site and the phones. You could do phones too. As a network engineer, you can do phones, layer one, layer two, and APs and firewalls and routers. There's a lot you could be doing. Like I said, that is just the title, but it's pretty in depth when it comes to the responsibility that you can have. So now let's talk about layer level two network engineer. It's still a network engineer, but oftentimes they're the person that the knock or the help desk will escalate to. So let's say you're in a building and one of the floors has an issue with a switch, switch goes down. What will happen is the knock will open the ticket, it'll get escalated to the layer two, net, the level two network engineers. They'll troubleshoot it and say it's broke. If they have one on, on site, they'll rebuild a new switch and then they'll replace that switch and arm made an old switch, or they'll just immediately open up a ticket with Cisco and get that switch arm made. And when the new switch is comes on site, they'll make sure the image is good and have, let's say, a network technician replace that switch, or they'll be the person that goes out and replaces that switch. That's pretty much level two network engineers. They're all about that really support. You know, the level one network engineer is all about reporting and then escalating and then that level two network engineer is all about troubleshooting so it's like okay basic troubleshooting can i do this a little more in depth troubleshooting can i do this and then if they can't fix it if they don't have any idea what's going on and they escalate it to the level three network engineer and then when the level three network engineer gets in they're the person that says hey what needs to be done is this a design issue let's redesign it how can we fix it what needs to be done they're the person that has or does their best to find the answers and if they can't find the answers they contact let's say cisco tech cisco tech gets involved or advanced services gets involved and then they come out and 
resolve the issue or they help resolve the issue, whether it be a bug, bug code, a, a, a bug in the code or something like that, you know? So I got a new, new baby crying in the back. Not sure if you can hear it. Either way, keep pushing through. <clears throat> so that's pretty much being a network engineer. Like I said, it's very broad. And when we talk about the titles and the responsibilities, when you look at the changes that Cisco has made with the CCNA, at the CCNA level, you could have a CCNA for every domain pretty much in networking, whether it's um, wireless, voice, or collaboration, route switch, data center. The, the list goes on and on when it comes to getting a CCNA. And so that's kind of how, or that is exactly how being a network engineer is in the field. You gotta wear many hats, you gotta constantly be learning, constantly. Um, there's been plenty of times where I've been in an environment and I have to know technology in several different domains very deeply. You would think like, hey, I want to become a network engineer, but I want to focus on security. Now, you could take over ICE in your environment, but that may not be the only responsibility that you have. So you can really dive into firewalls, ICE, or whatever you want to focus on, but you're going to have to know these route switch, BGP, OSPF, HSRP, um, riverbeds. There's so many different areas that you actually going to have to learn FIs because a lot of companies load balance. When you think of server applications, they have to be up. So they're load balancing those. As a network engineer, you support that. That's your job. So I hope I gave you an idea of what a network engineer is, what you may do. If we talk about, you know, how much a network engineer is making, there's many variables to that, you know. Let's just say, you know, on the low end, you make, I don't know, 50, 50,000. Let's say the low end, 50,000, high end, 300,000. <laughs> but you're going to have to be really good at what you do. You probably have to be the best. But anyway, and probably have to go to some remote area where it's tax free. But either way, there's ways to really make a lot of money as a network engineer as well. But that's going to require you to lab every day put in the work, put in the dedication. And although I do have a physical lab, we'll talk more about that later. You can lab in the cloud, Azure, AWS, even G on your local desktop or laptop. There's a million ways to build up your skill set. Cisco DevNet is another resource. There's so many ways to build up your skill set to become a network engineer. Watching my videos, watching other people's videos, Reddit's, Cisco blogs, CompTIA blogs. There's a million different blog posts, um, Packet Pushers, their podcasts and website. There's a million different resources to help you achieve that goal. But the main purpose in, that I want to stress in this video, besides what a network engineer is, is to, to let you know that you have to be learning continually. That has to be your focus if you decide you want to be a network engineer. Don't stop learning always look to achieve and advance and grow in your skill set always above all else above the money and everything because the money's going to come you you got to know your worth of course but the more you learn the more you grow the more you earn that's just the basis of everything so i hope you enjoyed this video like i said i want to hear everyone's thoughts and comments in the description of this video of the comment section of this video like share subscribe and i'll catch you on the next one Peace. Layer one out.